17th chapter and reading one verse tonight. Praise God. I appreciate all of you that stand in honor to the Bible and honor to the Word of God. This is the written Word of God, and according to the Word of God, we should stand when it's read. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. And I want everybody in here to say, And nothing shall be impossible to me. I want you to say it again, and nothing shall be impossible to me. Say it. Nothing shall be impossible to me. That's the word of God. That's not what the devil told you. That's not what your flesh told you. That's the word of God. I said that's God. You don't understand who's talking. If you understood who's talking, you get excited. I said that's God. If God would talk to me, I'm telling you, God is talking to you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's worship him. Oh, by the hand of God, by the spirit of God, by the power of God, by the presence of God. Almighty God. Oh, lead us tonight in the Holy Ghost, in the spirit, in the presence, in the power of God. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. By your spirit, I receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. I want to preach to you tonight beyond this mountain. Praise God. Beyond this mountain, hallelujah. We live tonight in a world full of mountains. If you never have paid any attention, it has gotten so bad recently, in recent years, that fun, some folks say now that we are going from crisis to crisis. Amen. If you ever know Brother Sorrow said to me, Brother Elder, when do we get out of the mountains in California? I said, as long as you're in California, you never get out of them. You only go from one range to the other range. Oh, there's the great San Joaquin Valley. I know. Uh, I'm sure there's places in California I haven't seen, been. Praise God. And there's the great floor right before you hit the ocean. Amen. And then there's places as you come out of the mountains, you're in the ocean. But <clears throat> I want you to know tonight that when you get into mountainous country, fact is, as I come back to Kansas, I got to thinking, man, once you leave Kansas going west, you're in mountains. That's right. All the rest of the way, you're in mountains going to the Pacific Ocean. 
It don't make no difference if you run south, north. Uh, you got to go west, but it doesn't make no difference whether you take the north route, the central route, or the southern route. All the way is mountains, and of course, deserts. You've never been across nothing till you've been across Nevada, that beautiful place. Praise God. Now, I said all that to say this, that when you get into a mountainous terrain and a mountainous country, you're from one peak to another peak, from one terrible height to another terrible height. And down in the valleys are not always beautiful. Sometimes down in the valley is death, especially in the deserts. Amen. You just stay with me for a while for I fix to preach tonight. Hallelujah. Somebody said it's not good English, Brother L. I said it anyhow, didn't I? Hallelujah. Now, what I'm saying is it seems like that the world that we're living in has come to be about like the country that I just come out of, as soon as you think you get out of one mountain experience, you're in another one. And some folks are saying from crisis to crisis. And this world is in serious trouble and chaos. And the worst thing tonight for you to do is to sit out there and act like it's not and act like you're not in it and act like this because you are, you know you are, you've cried tears this last year over horrible family situations. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to know who it is tonight that is speaking here. If you have a Bible, it should be, if it's a red letter edition, all these words in red letter that I've been preaching to you. It is Jesus Christ who is God manifested in the flesh who is saying all you have to do is speak to this mountain. Somebody said where in the world did you ever get the idea that you could speak something and that it would happen. I want to tell you some things tonight. I, I didn't know that I was going to preach this way, but now I feel the Holy Ghost on me fixing to talk to you. Praise God. Recently, there was an article written by some doctors that said that 90% of almost everybody's ailment comes from the words they speak out of that individual's mouth. Scientists are now getting to the place and it is a phenomena among the neurosurgeons that they now are beginning to learn that the speech of an individual person's body has much to do with the functions of all of the organs. In other words, whatever you say, it happens to you. Amen. That makes sense. I said to my wife, she and I were looking at a skeletal situation yesterday all of the nerves coming out of the back of a man the spinal area 
whether you know it or not, your nerves are hooked up to your stomach right out of the spinal cord. Hooked up to your liver right out of the spinal cord. I looked at it yesterday and studied it. Hooked up to your lungs right out of the spinal cord. Makes sense, don't it? Your, your nerves to your arms and legs and toes are hooked up to the nerves in your spinal cord. You know what makes sense? When you wake up of a morning, you think, I'm going to move my leg out over the bed and get up. And immediately, as soon as you think that, the brain shoots that to the foot and the foot moves. Yeah. All in one flash second. Or less, hundreds of seconds. You never do, you shouldn't, when you get my age, reach out and do things with your hands without first your brain telling your hand to do it. Come on, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kids do it. I was running a hot tar job here a while back, and a wrench fell in a bucket of hot tar, and the kid working for me reached down there to grab the wrench. It's the worst thing I could have ever dreamed up, because that tar was over 500 degrees. Some folks do things without their brain telling them to do it. It's called reaction. Amen. You stay with me. I'm fixing to go somewhere. I'm as important as the kids are. I'm the oracle of God talking to you right now. Hallelujah. Now, I read about these doctors, and if you say, I think I'm going to get the flu, you are going to get the flu. A lot of folks get cancer because they believe they're going to get cancer. That's right. That's Bible. You know, a lot of folks don't like this kind of preaching. I don't believe you can just think you're going to get cancer and get cancer. You're a prime subject. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The devil's got you hoodwinked to start with. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible said, as a man thinketh, so is he. If you think you're so poor and in poverty and you'll never be nothing but poor and in poverty, you'll never be nothing but poor and in poverty. You'll never get out of it. You think that way, you'll live that way, you'll always be that way. You've got to think different before you ever get out of it. Amen, 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 amen. amen. But I want you to know something tonight. There is power in the speech of the thought process that God gave man. Now, when God created the animals, he didn't create them like him. When God created the animals, he created them just subjects that are really three dimensions. A lot of you are not paying me much mind tonight. I got you so lost you don't know where you're at. You know, the snail, he's one dimension. The worm, he's one dimension. But you get to a dog, he's two dimension. You get to other animals, they're three dimensions. That's the reason why we must have came from an ape. Praise God. But really, you can't never get him above three dimensions. So I'm trying to figure out how scientists got him into our group because man is the only thing God created that's five dimension. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And God said, I'm going to make man in my image like me. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, if we're like God, then we ought to turn to Psalms 149 
and let us take and pay attention to what's going on here. In Psalms 149, verses 3 and 4, listen, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him. No, I want Psalms 148, 148 and 3. Praise ye him, sun, moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he spoke, for he spoke, for he commanded, and they were created. Praise God. I said he commanded, and they were he commanded, he spoke the world into existence. Uh, scientists say that there was a great explosion of composite gas. Uh, and for some reason, this gas uh, decided that there was too much in there and blew open. Uh, and that's how the stars were put in place. Uh, I don't have no trouble with that uh, because the Bible said in uh, the beginning, uh, there was nothing, amen, in the beginning. Nothing out there. But in the beginning, God said, let there be light. What got into that composite gas and exploded it was the word of God. And stood it out in outer space and strung it out and it became stars and moon and sun and light <laughs> hallelujah praise God praise God I get excited about it I said I get excited about it that's why folks can't serve God today with faith is because they believe they might be from a monkey. That's why people can't have faith in the word of God. They don't know whether this is the word of God or not. It's because they believe some goofy God down the road and they don't know what they are and who they are and where they come from. But I know where I come from and I know who I am tonight and I know the power that's inside of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now in John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word. It was the first thing that ever was. How do you know? And God said, and God said, before God said, there was nothing but God and his angelic host. Hallelujah. Before that, there was nothing but God. Where God come from, ask God. Hallelujah, if you knew all the secrets of God, you could be God, could you? But I tell you tonight, I don't need to know all the secrets of God. He's invested in me tonight. Power, power. In the beginning, God said, in the beginning was the word. Are you listening to me now? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. St. John 1 and 14, and the word was made flesh, and we beheld the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth. Grace and truth. He is the one that spoke the world into existence. He is the one that spoke the mind the sun and the stars into existence. He is the one that spoke all of the fruit into existence that you eat. He spoke the animal kingdom into existence and he spoke you and me into existence. Praise God. 
Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. A little over a year ago, I uh, I never even thought about this till I got ready to preach tonight, and that thing hit me. I've heard this title before somewhere, and I said, "Oh yeah." We showed a film in this church. It was called Beyond This Mountain. A lot of you came to see that film, Beyond This Mountain. Praise God. This story was about a little Malawi Indian boy who grew up, really they were headhunters. They ate men. And God had worked upon this missionary to go in there and preach to these people. And he had raised up some in there in the Bible. And this one man had got to where he got a hold of the Bible and had lots of faith in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. And he wanted to give it to all of his people. I wish tonight I could speak Spanish so I could do a better job of pastoring with these Spanish people. And this man, the missionary had taught him how to read the English version of the Bible. But none of his other fellow people could read it. And he wanted all of his countrymen to be able to read the Word of God. I wonder how many of you glad that you can read and understand the Bible tonight. Praise God. I remember in the program that he brought his little bitty son and sit him down in the field and over there beyond the mountain peaks of mountains was a peak that was jutting up very high and he told his son beyond that mountain beyond that mountain there's a school and if you can get into that school, they'll teach you to read and write English where we can translate the Bible into our language. Little old lad, come here, Joe. About the size of Joe, just a little tyke. I imagine Joe would have some apprehensions if he knew tonight that he was going to be sleeping amongst lions and tigers. I'm a pretty brave person. I know I sound like I'm bragging, but the older I get, I'm beginning to find out I'm braver than I think I am. I'm braver than my son. Maybe I'm just too crazy to have any sense to know better. I'm finding out I'm much tougher than Brother Tom Massey is. Fact is, I'm getting worried about how tough I am. Maybe I'm just too tough. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. But I don't care how brave you are and how tough you are. I remember a few years ago, three or four, sitting on a chilly clammy riverbank my boat at my feet five miles up the river from where we sit in to where I could get help to a telephone rainy season in the spring the ground that I was sitting on was soaking wet 
Finally, I scrounged around for some comfort. Man likes comfort at night. Got me some leaves and built me a fire. Got me a fire going. And as I begin to try to enjoy the warmth of that fire, try to use it for a light to repair a boat motor so I could maybe get it to run again to get me in. I could hear the hoot owls. Big old hoot owls sitting in the top of the tree. The hoot owl's not too bad. He just kind of gives you goofy imaginations. But then the screech owl comes in on top of it. Sounds like a woman dying. About that time, a pack of coyotes at my back began to come in. I didn't want to believe it when I heard it. I told folks I don't believe that's what I heard. But as I've talked to several men in this state that are in charge of the fish and game department, they tell me that that is very likely what I heard because in that country there's many of them. And my wife and I seen one with our own two eyes coming back from there in a trip recently. And the panthers begin to scream. All I had was a pocket knife. Some fishing hooks. I'm not afraid. I sit there and I told the two young men at my feet, they won't hurt us. They won't bother us. And you sit there and stare into the fire. And every imaginable thing you can think of is talking to you. Talking to you. I laid in a pack of coyotes one night and took meat and throwed it at them just to watch them fight each other. One night I ran from a coyote that wanted me for meat. I didn't have nothing to fight with that night but gasoline. I throw gasoline on the ground, threw a match in it, and scared him away. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something tonight. Some of the things that you're fighting and some of these seducing spirits that I preached on tonight are like wild terrors of the night are haunting you. Like wild animals are screaming at you. Amen. Like frightening spirits. I had a full-fledged minister that I looked up to to be very strong that told me this afternoon, Brother Elder, I'm afraid. I, I really need your help because really I am afraid. I am really full of fear. Hallelujah. I'm telling you tonight, there are people sitting in front of me that's full of fear tonight. You're afraid God won't forgive you of your sins. You're afraid God won't give you the Holy Ghost. You're afraid that you can't do this or that to receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, and the devil sits on your back and brings up your past uh, and brings up their past sins uh, and everything else uh, and tells you that you can't get out of that uh, and you can't be loose from that tonight. Uh, but Jesus said, uh, I give you power uh, to speak uh, to this mountain. Uh, I'm here to tell you something tonight. Uh, I want to show you like daddy showed the little boy. You see the peak uh, of that mountain beyond these peaks. Uh, if you get on the other side of that, uh, on the other side of that, uh, you're going to learn uh, to talk in a language. Uh, hallelujah. That's going to set you free. Uh, that's going to give you tonight uh, what you have need of and supply your every need Amen. beyond Hallelujah. beyond this mountain Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah praise God praise God praise God 
Praise God. I'm going to worship him. It's God tonight. It ain't Brother Elder. If you're looking under this church, you're in trouble. It ain't this church. You haven't found the God of this church. You haven't found the God of this pastor. You haven't found the God of these saints. It's the God that we serve tonight that set you free. You gotta get a look at him tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care what your needs is tonight. Hallelujah. I don't care what your needs is tonight. I hear some men say, I don't have the ability. Man, I won't tell you something else. I don't only have the, not have the ability, I don't even want to lean upon my own understanding because you see how God big God is. Uh, he's deeper than my mind. Uh, he's broader than my scope. Uh, he's greater than my understanding. Uh, in Isaiah 55 Oh, you ain't gonna figure me out. Uh, you'll never understand me. But if you have faith uh, as a grain of mustard seed, hear me and believe me and look beyond that mountain and say be thou removed speak to your mountain hallelujah 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 get that mountain out of your life tonight praise God Speak to it. Speak to it. I'm going to speak, Sister Kelly, to this sickness, and it's going to get out of here. Hallelujah. Somebody will come up to me and said, do you think Sister Keller will die pretty soon? I said, well, we'll see. I said, a lot of folks have been expecting her to die for a long time. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. If nothing else, maybe God's leaving her in this midst just to let somebody in here know he still can do the job. He still can do the job. Amen. Just so ever once in a while, we got to look at somebody that ain't willing to, to give up faith. Amen. Hallelujah. That ain't willing to lay it down, but still going to say, I believe he is and I believe he does. Hallelujah! 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 My God, you see, it wasn't no problem to Jesus. He went to Darius's house, and there they was in there. I kind of like what old brother Nate Wilson said. Had them mourners in there. And they were singing that song, she's dead, she's dead, she's dead on the bed. Jesus walked in there and said, no, she's not dead, she's just asleep. Ah, uh, this guy's stupid and don't know what's going on. And they started singing their song up again. She's dead, she's dead, she's dead on the bed. They thought that they could take the creator of man and make him think like all of them dumb people were thinking, that they could psych him out, that he didn't have any power to raise the dead, that he wasn't who he said he was, but he looked at that bunch of trumpeters and said, get out. Get out. You know what you need to do right now? You need to look at that bunch of trumpeters that's inside of your house tonight. That's inside of your mind tonight. And you need to say, get out. Get out. Get out of this house. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Mahata! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You need to get him out of your house. You've been keeping company with something that's not doing you any good. It's taken away the joy of your life. It's taken away the fruit of your life. It's taken away your health. It's taken away everything you desire. You need to say to that bunch of mourners, get out of this house. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And got them things out of there. What happened to Darius? He said to the mountain, Be thou removed. I want you to know for Jesus to raise Jairus' daughter from the dead was as easy as for me to get this pretty little girl and to take her for a walk. And he just took her right outside to mommy and daddy and said, don't worry. Look at all those pretty smiles. She's okay. Somebody said, oh, oh, you see, he was coming down the road. If you understand tonight, he's in here. You've looked for him. you prayed for him. you searched for him. You've been trying to find out where he's at. And I'm here to tell you he's here tonight. He's preaching. He's the God that's speaking out of the mouth of this man of God right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'm going to tell you something tonight. He's here. He's here right now. I feel him all over me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to tell you something right now. Oh, Brian Bartimius, shut up. Quit making so much noise. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor, preach. But you know what Brian Bartimius said? He said, What's everybody else excited about? Oh, there's a man coming down the road. Huh? There's a man coming down the road. Yeah. He said, who is it? He said, you ever hear of Jesus of Nazareth? He's coming down the road. Yeah. He's coming down the road. Jesus! Hey, shut up, shut up. Quit making that noise. Some of you will get the Holy Ghost tonight if you don't care about what anybody thinks. You're just going to say, Jesus! 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 I want to tell you when you come to get the Holy Ghost, there ain't no time to start and there ain't no time to stop. What you do when you come to get the Holy Ghost, you come and get it. That's what you do. You just come and get it. You don't go away until you got it. Hallelujah. Hey. 
You better shut up. You want to make Jesus mad at you? No, he wants to play with you. He don't like people yelling at him like that. It's embarrassing. <laughs> you know why some of you ain't getting nowhere? You're more worried about what somebody else is thinking instead of what the results is. And I'm going to tell you something, old blind bar team is, he didn't care if it was embarrassing to them. He didn't care if it was embarrassing to Jesus. He didn't care who it was. He had the man. He had the man. He had the man. Jesus! Jesus! Some of you said, I wish we wouldn't act like this while he's preaching. You know what's wrong with you? You don't know what I'm preaching about. You belong down there in the church of refrigerator. Hallelujah. This Jesus that I'm talking about make you act like that. Amen. It'll make you get up and shout. Some law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what's wrong with you? You've never seen blind eyes healed. Your problem is you still don't know whether he can heal blind eyes. Your problem is you don't know whether he can save me. I'm such a rotten, no good. You know what? You're proud of your sins. You're proud of your stinking self. If you ever got to where you could see beyond this mountain, if you ever got to see what's beyond this mountain, you'd speak to this mountain. I don't want to be proud of this no more. Jesus! He come over there. He said, Who are you? Oh Lord, I'm blind, Bartimaeus. What do you want? Oh Lord, ain't nobody ever going to be able to give me any eyes, but you can. You know something? Nobody ever going to get you out of this prison. Nobody ever going to get you off this alcohol. Nobody's ever going to get you out of the rotten family situation you're in. But I'll tell you what. There's one here tonight. He is. He is. He's going to get you out of it. He's going to get you out of it. What I got to do, brother Allen? Speak to that mountain. Say, devil, get away from me. I'm going to the altar tonight. I'm getting it. Ain't nothing stopping me. It's mine. All right, blind bar team. Just wait a minute. I got to work up a little spit here. You talk about getting mad. I wonder what you'd do if I'd spit in your empty eye holes. Boy, he didn't care. He went away with 20-20 eye vision. Hallelujah. <laughs> My God, I... I feel like I got an angel on each side of me tonight. He's walking along and he stopped. Hey, Zacchaeus, what are you doing up there? Well, you see, Jesus, I want to tell you something, Jesus. I heard so many good things about you that I just had to come and see you one time. I think some have heard so many good things that they just had to come down here to see one time. Amen. 
Zacchaeus, come on down out of that tree. I'm going home with you today. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm an unclean man. You can't go in my house, Jesus. Why is that? Because I'm a tax collector. And you know what people think about tax collectors. And I've cheated people. And I've lied on people. And I've stole from people. And I've done a lot of people wrong and dirty. Jesus said, you know what, Zacchaeus? He said, what? He said, I think I better go to your house today. Sounds like you really need me to come to your house. Beyond this mountain. Beyond this mountain tonight. He's here tonight. Come, Sister Elder. How many of you want to take him home with you tonight? How many of you want to take him home tonight? I don't care what you've done. Beyond this mountain tonight. He spoke the world into existence. He's caused the sun to glitter with one command. He calls the moon to shine with one command. He causes the seasons to take place with one command. I stood at that great big Pacific Ocean in the dark with about six to nine foot waves rolling in at my feet. Spooky looking in the dark. And I looked at that and I tried to figure out the tide. What in the world makes that tide go way up there? And what makes it go back? Because he told it to. He spoke that power into existence. Man, if he can speak the songbird into a beautiful song in the morning. If he can speak to the powerful ocean and cause the waves to dash. If he can speak tonight to the mighty raging roaring lions and cause them to glorify him tonight. What on earth in your life? You know what he's waiting on? He's waiting on you to talk to him. He's waiting on you to say, Mountain, you've stopped me long enough. Mountain, you've hindered me long enough. Mountain, you've stayed in my way long enough. But I'm shoving you out of the way tonight. I'm going to the master. Shall we stand? Jesus is here right now. Reach out and touch him. Jesus is here right now. tell you something tonight some of you that need the Holy Ghost you're waiting for a whole lot of folks to come up here and fall around these altars so that you kind of blend in with everything 
But I'm going to tell you something tonight. The Bible said he that hungers and thirsts after. Blind Bartimaeus didn't care who seen and who heard. And if you really want the Holy Ghost tonight, you don't have to wait for everybody to come to this altar. If you're really hungry and you really want it, you'll come right now. You'll bust your way out of those pews right now and get down here and get it. You don't care who sees. You don't care who hears. The Master's here in this house right now. The Master's here in this house right now. Right now is what I want. Right now is what I want. Praise God. The Lord's waiting. Come on. That's it, son. Praise God. That's it. Come on. Shout and touch him. Listen here, serious. Come on. Jesus Hallelujah. Is here. Hallelujah. Right now. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You don't have to wait for everybody. If you're hungry, come to the water hole. Come to the water hole. Get what you need tonight. Get the mountain out of your life. Ready you don't need a smoke heart. screen to cover you up. Come on Jesus, out of there. Be exposed. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I'm lost. I got to be saved. I'm lost. I got to be saved. Only Beyond this mountain, beyond that mountain tonight, beyond that mountain tonight, are you going to speak to it? Are you going to speak to that mountain tonight? Church, come on, church. Come on, get a burden. Come on, get with it. Get a burden. Get into it. Lean into it. Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Lord. Oh, wonderful God, wonderful God, wonderful God.